previous visit, and that was before you were saddened by the tragic death of your predecessor. I want to congratulate you on a successful transition and believe that you're uh, continuing his policies. But you must also have an agenda there that you want to get on, so uh, I'll thank you very much. To you. A terrible mistake and would get in big trouble. He said, the last time I was sent to the principal, he told me, I don't want to ever see you in here again. <laughs> Test scores declined while violence, pregnancy, and drug abuse increased. In a real sense, we were failing our children and students who studied. One way of helping all our schools is by bringing more accountability into the educational system history and science, and to raise their academic requirements. A majority of Americans also want to see our schools once again building truths which never change. Honor, justice, loyalty, and courage. Our schools teaching the Constitution. And that is a vital responsibility, and one your schools take seriously and do well. But the strength of its message has not faded from the day it was signed. And what gives the document its power? As I see it, our schools shape America's future one student at a time. So the men who wrote our Constitution, founding fathers who designed our system, I always note how openly they gave praise to God and sought his guidance. And I just can't believe, I must say before I go on, someone has once said, that actually, as long as there are final exams, there will be prayer in schools. <laughs> in, the, in the beginning, I was joking about being called to the principal's office, but now I know you have other things to do. So do I. The pork nomination will fail in the committee. Over my dead body. He can see me dead Let's wait and see. No, no, don't worry. It's not right. You, you and you, you don't have the right to ruin it on us. Nor are you. It's you who are it's saying, not the ladies. Uh, uh, you are going to make news just by being a fan. Would you like to take a if you have a newsletter, somebody to put it in the news, it will. It's open and available. Will you put it in? Sorry. Why don't we try to go this way? Good morning. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, Lynn. Well, well, thank you all for coming down this morning. As you know, the Senate Judiciary Committee will act on my nomination of Judge Bork to the Supreme Court. His opponents have made this a political contest by using tactics and distortions that I think are deplorable. And I could say more on that same tone, but time is of the essence. Robert Bork is, without question, one of the most qualified candidates for the Supreme Court that we've ever had, and I am going to continue to do everything I can to get him confirmed. And our work is cut out for us, and we have a lot to do before the floor vote. We simply have to work together on this. And that's a pause, and the meeting will start in a short time. Mr. President, are you saying you are not going to withdraw this nomination until there's a vote on the Senate floor? I am saying I am not going to withdraw this nomination. Under any circumstances? No. Sir, you say it's political, but a number of Republicans have also come out against Mr. Bork, including a member of the Republican leadership, Senator Chaffin. Well, Chris, I'm not going to take any more questions. We've got a meeting to get to, and I have a hunch that subject will be discussed in this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
specifically about the Heflin and uh, Nunn and Childs. He said he's not counting those three. Uh, they're still undecided, so I don't know how that judge would go a ball's list, but uh, Branson has been uh, known to be a fairly accurate head counter. He, that's all he does all day long. And, uh, <laughs> 